Xbox and Microsoft announced the closure of several studios with acclaimed titles in their name. Xbox gamers in the community are in an uproar. And now the question is being asked, is it time for Phil Spencer to go? What's up people, it's your boy MM2K of Geeks Cloud Dosage Hard Knock Digital Culture back again with another video. This is the NRO Spiel. This is where we talk about the latest and greatest in the gaming news, I kind of go on a rant. I'm gonna try my best to keep this as condensed as possible because we'll just follow up this one with the podcast. I'm in the very, very near future. Um, but with that said, we're gonna ask the question, uh, you know, does, does Phil Spencer, does he deserve to keep this job that he has? Why does Phil, why Phil Spencer should be fired after the latest Xbox studio closures? All right. So let's get straight into the story. This is coming from Shinobi602 on Twitter, where he announces Microsoft has closed down multiple Bethesda studios, including Arcane Austin, Redfall, Tango Gameworks, The Evil Within, Ghostwire Tokyo, Alpha Dog Studios, and Roundhouse Studios, where he clarifies further in the tweet that Roundhouse has just been merged with Zenimax Online. But even people that are known to be PlayStation enthusiasts like my homie, uh, creative Kofi here. He asked on Twitter, Tango? And I think a lot of us were taken aback because there are tweets out there from Aaron Greenberg of, of Xbox where they say that they are happy with the results. Very happy, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, with the results of um, Hi-Fi Rush, the game that was made by Tango Studios that was just closed today. And... Um, you know, it, it, there was rumors that they were beefing up to Tango Studios. There was there, there was advertisements they were beefing up and they were going to make more games that they really, really appreciated what the studio was capable of. Now we fast forward just to, I, well, Tang, I think Tango, I, I think Tango dropped Hi-Fi Rush in 2023. It's only a year later if that and they're closing the studio. So, you see my response to it. <laughs> you see it here. I'm like, no effing way. And I just go on a Twitter barrage and I'm not even at home in the studio. I'm all taking care of some personal business. And, and I'm only here recording this now because I was able to break away for a good hour, 45 minutes more likely to, to do so. And I got to hit right back. But yeah, this has to be addressed. And like I said, I promise we're going to address this in a much broader format in a podcast form. All right. But there's something else that I want to show you guys to where this isn't just me, MM2K, the resident Xbox haters, you guys try to flag me talking about this and, and, and bringing this to light and questioning Phil's resume again and, and, and asking the question, does he deserve this particular job? It's other people that I think are agreeing with the sentiment and maybe we need to start recognizing what Phil has done as a failure. Let me show you guys something. This comes from Pong Soul. Now, shout out to Pong Soul. He probably doesn't even know that I know who he is. Um, but no, he's a content creator. He, he creates Xbox content. Very enthusiastic about the platform. He always looks at the platform from a positive light. Well, maybe always isn't the, the fairest, but f for the most part, he does. Right? Um, even he put this out. This is the studio closures by Xbox today are the final nail for the original vision at Xbox P3, which is Phil Spencer, as you can see there, had been selling. Money Men won, and as ABK turned out to be the deal with the devil, many have predicted, this is absolute BS. But I felt like I had to elaborate on that, why? Because I, I needed it to be it, it resoundingly clear that yes, the Money Men won, but because Phil Spencer promised Satya that A, the series consoles would be competitive. B, going exclusive with Bethesda immediately post-purchase was the best option. Both were wrong with dire consequences. Money men will be money men. It was Phil's job, however, to prove them wrong and he failed. And see, what I'm trying to illustrate there is that there were some critical missteps and I'm not just pulling this out my rear end. This is stuff that was unmasked in the um, APK proceedings and in, in various emails 
that were released and in, into the public between Phil Spencer and Satya Nadella and, and responses to things that Phil apparently decided from other people that shocked him. Let's, let's deal with the series consoles first and foremost. And a direct email, a very passionate one to Satya Nadella. It feels like Phil Spencer is pleading to Satya, look, we did a lot of R&D into this. I'm paraphrasing. We, we, we put a lot of investment in this, but it's going to be worth it. Why? Because based upon my experience, I really feel like that we have the better console package than PlayStation, our big rival. We're really going to be able to compete, and it's really going to show. I feel really good about this, and man, we're really going to turn things around on a competitive front during my tenure. That's, that's the bulk of the email. That's the gist of the email, rather, right? That turned to be totally false. Xbox One generation was considered an abysmal failure competitively because just the generation prior, they were running neck and neck. You know what I'm saying? Um, this console generation is actually doing worse than that one. And then all this other stuff that they want to do on the periphery with cloud and, and, and PC saturation, it's not filling in the gap that the console has this generation from last one, right? The second thing is, can be assessed from the fact that um, when they put, when they purchased Bethesda for eight billion dollars, mind you, like before ABK, this was the hugest, um, you know, gaming deal ever. Then you know, right around the corner, they do ABK. But when they purchased Bethesda for eight billion dollars, the thought process was, look, we we got to get this money back. Now, do we go exclusive down the road? Sure, Elder Scrolls Six come out. We make that exclusive. That's huge for us. We got the Starfield coming out. We got some other stuff coming out. Let's keep that multi-plat. Let's build up some revenue. Let, let, let's just go BAU. It's a business term, business as usual. Let's go BAU. When Elder Scrolls Six come out or some of our more lucrative stuff comes out, let's then go exclusive. That was the thought because we had Tim Stewart out there talking about our strategy with, with, with Bethesda is first, better, best. Meaning it'll maybe it'll come to Xbox first, but we're still gonna it's still gonna be multi-plat at, at some point in time or we're gonna have a better version or we're gonna have the best version. You know what I'm saying? Like it wasn't, we're gonna go totally exclusive. Out of nowhere, and even to the surprise of the people at Bethesda, Pete Hines and, and Todd Howard, they decide to go exclusive. And Phil's excuse is wherever Game Pass is, Bethesda games will be exclusive to wherever Game Pass is. And everybody was like, whoa. And there's even an email again from the ABK proceedings where Tim Stewart pretty much is like, wow. That was an agenda pushed by Phil Spencer because I, I don't even think Satya Nadella values the exclusive narrative. He wants to make money. But again, like he was listening to Phil Spencer when he was pleading his case for the consoles, it's easy to access how Phil Spencer's his, his SME Another business term, subject matter expert, business, uh, Phil is just me on um, video game habits and stuff. And if they feel like that they will see success from this uh, video game habit of exclusives, like he's leaving it in Phil's hands to assess this as this is quality content that if we leave this exclusive, we're going to see more success from this than we would if we left it multiplied. Like the long-term ramifications are gonna outweigh the short-term, okay, it's multiplied if we do this. And Satya believed him. And again, that was a fail. And then you can argue that the Bethesda exclusivity is what led to them not being able to obtain ABK a lot easier and forced their hand to go multi-plat, we'll call, just to keep Call of Duty multi-plat for 10 years, even on competing cloud platforms, that again, you can also argue was totally against the antithesis of what Satya Nadella wanted to do with that purchase. I feel like, and I've laid out the evidence on other content here, definitely make sure you're checking out our members content here, hit that join button. I've laid out in such content that Satya Nadella was only willing to spend so much money for ABK because he really is concerned or he was concerned with the flight of Google at the time and Amazon on the cloud because he really is concerned with um, competing businesses in the cloud. And if they get Call of Duty on the cloud, if they can secure Call of Duty on the cloud, that's going to really boost their business. He wanted to pull the rug from under them on that. He wanted to do everything he could 
It was good enough to make Google bow out. And in that bow out, Google then ran and snitched. <laughs> they dry snitched or just snitched on Microsoft, as we now know and said, look, they did this to us the first time with Bethesda. We had a key relationship there, and now they're doing it again with Call of Duty. Not only are we you know, continuously talking to Activision and trying to get Call of Duty on Stadia, but we have a key Google Cloud relationship with Call of Duty already, and they're yanking that from us. That's what led to all of these 10-year deals having to be intact. That led to Microsoft having to sell its rights to its cloud business to Ubisoft. One that is stifling them right now because that's what um, is uh, people are arguing on why there are certain Activision Blizzard cloud games that are not showing up on xCloud right now because they got to negotiate the rights for their own games to be on the cloud on their service. You could say at the cornerstone of that was the decision to make Bethesda games exclusive so early in the game and you can tie that back to Phil, all right? So, with those failures at hand, then you rope in the failures from, that's just this gen, you rope in the failures from last gen. Again, assuring people that Crackdown 3 will be released in quality because he's played it and it's going to be the game that gamers, that Xbox gamers deserve. Releasing a mid-gen refresh, an expensive one at that, $500 Xbox One X, but launching it with Super Lucky's Tales in a game with the original assets from the original Xbox, the OG Xbox, pretty much two, uh, two prior generations ago. And then to have the competing PlayStation 4 Slim, a lesser uh, tier of that brand, come out at $200 with God of War 2018 and with that game on the lesser console, quote unquote, look better than anything on your more expensive premium mid-gen refresh. That result led to the Xbox One X, which really put them in the hole as far as research and development and, and just shipping out there. It, it, it led to that console being the worst sold console last generation only for Phil to repeat that same inability to keep a finger on his pulse when it comes to quality again this time and now we see the written proof of it in that e. right and there's more to elaborate on this let's let, let me show you guys something else this comes from Daniel Lamont if you don't know who he is you better know He's a world-renowned gaming analyst from the Nico Group. Um, very, formerly very positive on Xbox affairs when it comes to Game Pass because he saw the vision, but just like the rest of us, he knows that a vision is just smoke and mirrors unless there's execution behind it. And now that we see that they can't execute under this current leadership at Xbox, he now has this to say. He says, it's becoming clear to me that Game Pass growth has slowed. Xbox is increasingly looking to take an IP first approach to its consumer facing business. That's not to say service and platform aren't still important, but that it seems like Xbox wanted its games to be profitable as standalone titles. Previously, Xbox was looking at Game Pass as a way to offset development costs for its own first party titles. It doesn't look like that's the case anymore and also helps to explain their recent exploration of releases on competing platforms. In response to that, I said this. I said, thank you, Z Huge, for underscoring this. I've said this on multiple occasions as of late. I think it's clear. Game Pass has failed to push the brand as expected. The core strategy and brand identity are changing yet again. Hashtag lesson. Don't go by what they say. Go by what they are offering. This is a world-renowned an analyst who, upon me reposting that, like the comment as you can see here now i'm not trying to pat myself on the back i've been covering xbox for longer than a lot of you guys have been playing xbox i've been covering it 
uh, halfway through the OG Xbox um, period when I was like, why aren't there more games utilizing System Link? You know what I mean? And, and, and me going on a campaign to research that and talk about Xbox on, on social media. And we've been doing that since the mid, midway point of the Xbox OG generation. Only to come here to YouTube in 2017 and start talking about Xbox and PlayStation and such more extensively. So I understand their habits, I understand their practice, I understand when things don't work for, from a Microsoft standpoint, why they gotta pivot and move. And it was been abundantly clear for me because of the patterns that I saw, and I'm able to see those patterns a little bit more because like Daniel Lamont, I am embedded in the Fortune 500 world or in the business world because I've worked for two plus decades in a Fortune 500 company, doing things globally and understanding how this type of business works. Not gaming, but this type of business um, from a, again, Fortune 500 standpoint, how it works and how decisions are made and why. So to be fair, I'm speaking his lingo as well. I understand what he analyzes because I'm in that world. And it all makes sense. It's all relative, right? So with that being said, It's clear to see that A, there were failures in the um, Phil's original generation, which was the Xbox One generation when he took over for Donnie D. A lot of it was excused because there were decisions that were made that were out of Phil's hands that he had to deal with. But now going into this generation, everything was of his mindset. And it's even worse. Game Pass which is the bread and butter, which was the bread and butter of Microsoft. That's, that's really what Satya wanted. He, want, he, he believes deeply in subscription services across Microsoft. He deeply believes in cloud integration. Both are embedded right now into Game Pass. Both are not seeing the success that they needed, to, needed it to see. With that being said, and you just look at the brevity of, of things that happened under Phil's tenure, I mean, we've had uh, we've had heads of uh, departments like Jack Trenton that had to deal with the DDoS attacks and anonymous and so forth. We've had other people that, you know, um, didn't probably fare so well, maybe at Nintendo way back in the day or whatever. Um, you, you even had some people at PlayStation. Um, you know, well, no, no, I'm not PlayStation. You had some people at Sega. Well, one of my favorite gaming execs, well, my favorite gaming exec of all time, Peter Moore, before he became super famous, um, and, and, and loved globally. Um, he was the head over at uh, Dreamcast. And they, they had to shut down. You, we, we've seen failures before, but I've never seen the long list of failures and ability to execute properly and land where you stated you would land with a variety of different things that are critical to your brand as I've seen with Phil Spencer. So, if you're asking me, should Phil Spencer be fired? I, I mean, I, I don't say this lightly or, you know, like who cares, you know, but hell yeah, he should have been let go. I think there are so many other things that Phil could be good for in gaming, like working at ESA, being an advocate for gaming, talking to, to governments and lobbying on behalf of gaming, stuff like that. He has a pure passion for gaming, but he doesn't have a pure passion and an eye for quality. And if you're gonna be doing, if you're gonna be leading gaming at this level, you got to have that. You got to be able to be like Yoshida at PlayStation. Go to Corey Balrog during their first attempt at the God of War be, be, uh, reboot and say that's not good enough. You got to go back to the drawing board. That's how you get masterpieces like God of War 2018. In contrast, Phil looks at the mess that was Crackdown 3 and really, I think that he really believed this. It was the game that Xbox gamers deserve. Xbox gamers, you don't deserve that. You deserve better. It is not your job to make uh, um, excuses for someone making six figures and beyond. He's rich. It's his job to serve. You're not to serve him. He is to serve you by giving you quality product and showing your appreciation to you. That's the best thing that a, a business can do to show appreciation to its consumer base. Is give them what they need and give them what they want. 
And you're not going to see that type of quality. You're not going to see that eye for quality as long as Phil is at the top because, like I always say, a fish rots from the head. That's it from your boy. Let me know what you think about all this in the comment section below. Like I always say, who cares what I think? But if you did like what I had to say, check out the links below to follow me. Again, they will lead you to Geeks, Cloud Dosage, Hard Knock Digital Culture, in here, MM2K Gaming. With that said, appreciate all of y'all. Peace. And stay tuned for our podcast where we're going to dive into this even more and we're going to have my homie, my 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 uh, my PNC, my partner in crime, Cold Blood Sensei, <laughs> deliver his thoughts on all this because man, oh man, oh man, you wait until he, he says his piece. All right, y'all. Till then, have a wonderful gaming day. Peace.